Hello, and thank you very, very much for coming. My name is Juan Rodriguez. For those that I haven't worked with, I'm, I'm the Interim Equal Opportunity Officer. Uh, my staff and I uh, put this thing together with the, co the collaboration, cooperation of Meg Clovis, Supervisor Parker, Yanni. We're very excited to do it. Um, we're thinking about doing more, and I kind of sold the idea to Meg today. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm working on it, and we'll have others, but this is, this is a start. So uh, we're really excited to have it, uh, to, to be doing this type of stuff. Uh, we're doing it, obviously, as you saw from the flyer, in celebration of Women's History Month. We had a resolution last week declaring Women's History in, uh, Month in the County of Monterey, so it's official. Uh, <laughs> it's also, yeah. Uh, it's also actually officially uh, Women's History Month in the nation is, is the month of March, so uh, by con congressional um, declaration. So anyway, I'll shut up uh, and I'll pass it on uh, to Supervisor Parker, who will uh, say a, a, a couple of words and then pass it on to uh, Ms. Clovis. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thanks, Juan. Um, I just want to say it's really great to see the Equal Opportunity Office uh, putting on these kinds of events, and it really was an honor uh, for the Board of Supervisors to declare March uh, as Women's History Month. We, I think we do it every year, and um, it's really nice to have activities going on to, to mark the month. And just want to appreciate the Commission on the Status of Women. They do their event every year honoring outstanding women in Monterey County. They've got an interesting new take. They're going to have a different theme every year of issues that affect women, and then they're going to honor women who are working on those issues. And I think their issue for the coming year is human trafficking, just something that we wish didn't happen. And so I don't know about you, but sometimes when there are things going on that I wish didn't happen, I try to avert my attention and my gaze, um, and that doesn't help. So uh, we need to really focus uh, our attention on the issue and really look at how we can solve it. And I just want to say, you know, having these kinds of times, weeks or months, where we're paying special attention to people or issues, uh, I think is really important. And for me, you know, women in our uh, society, um, I think kind of the theme of women's history this year is, um, you know, women and work. Uh, women always work. In fact, women work um, out in the workforce, and then we work when we get home, and then, you know, we work on the weekends doing more stuff. So, um, but the challenge for us is that the work that women has, have done has been undervalued uh, over time. So we're starting to see some more recognition, but we're not there yet. Um, so very important to keep returning to these issues. And then, of course, an issue that is very close to my heart is women in leadership in particular. What we know is that when women, when we have not 50% as we should be, but even just 30% women in leadership positions on boards or in internal management, companies have a better return on investment and ride the cycles of business a lot more smoothly than uh, organizations that don't have at least 30 percent women in leadership positions. Um, it's true on elected boards as well. <laughs> and I'm really pleased that uh, this year we have gone from 20 percent women on the Board of Supervisors to 40 percent. <laughs> That's more than 30 percent. I'm a happy gal. Um, and um, I, don't, I think Supervisor Adams, uh, Chair Adams, will be able to be here um, as well today. And I want to acknowledge uh, Supervisor Alejo, who's just arrived. Um, but uh, what we find is that when there are 30% uh, or more women in leadership, uh, you get uh, uh, more collaboration, uh, more uh, problem solving, um, and more of a focus on uh, future outcomes, fewer unintended consequences. Um, and so uh, women present in the room, uh, in the boardroom or wherever, really help everyone make better decisions. So I'm really uh, proud to be part of that process. And of course, one of the things that you know in your family and in your circle of friends is that your position, your work, um, you serve as a role model. And so the more of us women who are in positions of influence and who are visible in different professions, it gives um, girls coming up the idea, oh, I could, maybe I could do that too. 
So it's really important. There's so many uh, aspects to this. So just appreciate you all being here today. And um, I want to leave plenty of time for our uh, speaker who's going to be talking to us about women uh, in the history of Monterey County, which should be really interesting. So thanks for the opportunity. Hi, I think probably everybody knows me. I've been with Monterey County since 1981 as county historian long time. But what uh, Supervisor Parker said about women and work, that's pretty much what I'm going to be talking about today. So uh, women in Monterey County have worked in all different types of professions, and some of them have made headlines, and some of them haven't. But they, everybody has contributed to shaping Monterey County, Monterey County's development, history, and well-being. So let's see, hopefully I'm going to push the right button. Okay, so, so this is my first slide. This is women working at the Spreckles factory, which opened in 1898. This is, was more of a traditional job for women, working in uh, the bag room, as it was called. The women worked in the factory um, starting in 1898. But then in World War II, when men were deployed, they had, women had to fill every single activity at the Spreckles uh, Sugar Beet Factory. And this is a photo of one of the mechanics at the factory. We had our own Rosie the Riveters at the yeah. Spreckles Factory. Yeah. <laughs> so women have packed lettuce in Pajaro. And they've packed sardines on Cannery Row. There was, of course, women in agriculture, women in sports, <laughs> and women in business. This is, these are some dressmakers in Castroville who had a dressmaking shop on Merritt Street. This is an unusual occupation, stagecoach driver. So I can't say a lot of people were stagecoach drivers. But this is Charlie Parkhurst. Probably some of you have heard this story. Um, she grew up Charlotte Parkhurst, but then when she came to California, she uh, disguised herself as a man in order to drive stagecoaches. She loved horses, loved driving. She became one of the best known whips in Northern California. They didn't know Charlie was Charlotte until she actually died. But she's... Um, She's believed to be the first uh, woman to ever vote. She cast her vote for Ulysses S. Grant in 1868. Of course, women have been homemakers for eons. And they've been in law enforcement, too. This is um, Mabel Iceman, who was the first woman, woman in the Salinas Police Department. She was also the first woman ever to walk a beat. And um, she was, um, she walked her own foot patrol. She was hired in uh, 1942. And she, her foot patrol was at night in rough neighborhoods. But she was known to be very effective. <laughs> <laughs> so they, there's been women in science. This is um, Helen Savitsky. She um, escaped Stalin's Russia when the German so soldiers evacuated from Kiev, she actually followed the German soldiers out of Russia. And she uh, was successfully came to Salinas, California. She worked for the USDA for almost 50 years. She was one of the most renowned sugar beet scientists in the world. And if you remember, sugar beets at one point in time were one of the main crops here in Monterey County. So, of course, women have been mothers and raised families. And they've been in education. This is Anna uh, Thompson with her classroom in the Argyle District in South Monterey County. It's near Halone. Oh, bootleggers. <laughs> <laughs> women have been bootleggers. This is, I uh, said, a long name. Mary Marota de Maria Chapelle. She came to Monterey from France in 1918. She was a widow with five children. 
she remarried she married a grocer and she helped her husband um, run the grocery store on Alvarado Street in Monterey but during prohibition she sold wine out the back door and so in Monterey she uh, became known as the queen of the bootleggers <laughs> And women, of course, have been medical professionals and Monterey County employees. <laughs> this is... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is uh, Lois Erickson. <laughs> this is Lois Erickson, who was the secretary for the Planning Commission in 1960. Wow. This was the uh, planning department's file room. <laughs> so, all I can say is <laughs> things have gotten better. <laughs> of course, there have been women in music. Joan Baez uh, lived in Big Sur. She also lived in Carmel Valley. She um, was the founder of the Center of, for Nonviolence in Carmel Valley, and she was also one of the founders for the um, Big Sur Folk Festival. And then there's cowgirls, cowgirls from Carmel Valley. These are the um, Piazzoni sisters, and they were accomplished cowgirls who could rope and ride bulls and barrel race. And they were the stars of the Salinas Wild West show. That was the precursor of the Rodeo. So this is in about 1913. This is Modesta, Modesta Castro de Dana. She was one of uh, Monterey's first business women. She was the daughter of General Jose Castro, who was one time governor of Alta, California. And she became the first woman restaurateur. She opened a Spanish restaurant opposite the Washington Hotel. Good location because all the delegates for the Constitutional Convention stayed at the Washington Hotel. Frances Clark, another scientist. She was a pioneering marine biologist who worked in Monterey. She was um, one of the earliest female fisheries researchers to receive worldwide acclaim. She had a 32-year career with the California Department of Fish and Game and became director of the California State Fisheries Laboratory. In Monterey, her research centered on grunion and sardines. This is Perfecta Garcia and Sinalis. She is a, a Salinan Indian who lived down at Mission San Antonio. But uh, she was a mas master basket maker who passed her talent on, fortunately, to her daughters. But today there are only uh, remaining 13 Salinan baskets, and they're at UC Davis and UC Berkeley, but they're all thought to be Perfecta's work. This is Beatrice Casey, also known as Tid. So she started out, she was uh, very interested in historic preservation and she was the principal champion of the restoration of Mission San Antonio. She also wrote a well-known history about the mission. In 1947, her father died and so her father ran all the newspapers in South County. So she took over the ownership and publishing of the King City Wrestler, the Soledad V, and the Greenfield News. This is May Johnson. May moved to the Monterey Peninsula in 1954 and pursu pursued a career in education. She started as a substitute teacher. She went on to earn a master's degree at the Monterey Institute of International Studies, and she became the first female principal of Monterey High School. This is Isabel Meadows, and she was born in Carmel Valley. Her mother was a Rumsian Indian, and her father was a pioneer whaler, James Meadows. But she learned the Rumsian language from her mother and carried on that oral tradition. She went on to work for the Smithsonian. Um, Smithsonian uh, ethnographer John Peabody Harrington uh, recorded the language and uh, she worked in Washington DC and also in Carmel Valley 
and really made a great contri contribution to ethnographic and historical information. Anne Haddon, maybe this name is familiar to some of you, she was Monterey County's first librarian. She arrived in Salinas in 1913 to organize the Monterey County Library System. Within six months, she opened five branches. The first branch was in Greenfield. In 1916, she was tasked with opening branches in the Big Sur region. And so this is when she went up and down the coast, either hiking or with her burrows, to bring books to remote settlements. During her 16 years as library director, she established 126 branch libraries. She's been inducted into the California Library Hall of Fame. Margaret Owings, the uh, one with the gloves, seen here with Lady Bird Johnson. And Margaret Owings is known for her conservation work in Monterey County, focusing on wildlife and the protection of Big Sur. Owings founded the Friends of the Sea Otter and won a battle to stop bounty hunting of mountain lions. She was a member of the Point Lobos League, and she was instrumental in saving beaches between Carmel River and Point Lobos. She was the first woman to serve on the California Parks Commission. And here's Julia Platt. This is sort of a longer story. She was a pistol. Um, so her background, I mean, she was a brilliant woman. She started her graduate studies in zoology and at Harvard University in 1887. She did groundbreaking research in neurobiology and comparative embryology at Woods Hole, Bryn Mawr, and the University of Chicago and Radcliffe. She also studied at the Hopkins Marine Station in the early 1890s, and she continued her doctoral studies at several German universities. She tw published 12 scientific papers in 12 years. So those are big credentials, but she couldn't get a job in academia. Mm -hmm. Nobody would hire her. And so what did she do? She decided she would go into public service. So she first got into public service because she lived in Pacific Grove. Some of her neighbor's chickens went into her yard and she shot them. And so she said, figured, we need to change the zoning regulations around here and not allow chickens in Pacific Grove. So that was her first big thing that, that she did. But. Um, what she's probably best known for is uh, this photo here. I know it's not a great photo, but um, she really believed in public access to the beaches. And so the owner of the beach house uh, and PG had built a big uh, fence, which people couldn't get to the beach at Lover's Point. So she decided, you know, she she tried going through the city council. She tried all different things. So she decided, finally, she's going to take the, the you know, matter in her own hands. She's in her 70s here. She took a sledgehammer and a saw, and she broke that fence down. So she broke the fence down, and then she put up a sign that said this, open by Julia B. Platt. This entrance to the beach must be left open at all hours when the public might want to pass through. I act in this matter because the council and the police department at Pacific Grove are men and possibly somewhat timid. <laughs> so city council got angry. They got angry and they said, if you want to run everything, why don't you just run for mayor? And so she did and she won and she became the second mayor in California history and the first female mayor of PG. This is Jane Bushton Allen, one of the uh, pioneers of Monterey. She came to California uh, via Australia, and um, she arrived here in 1850. But before she left, she decided, I don't want to live in what was she called mud huts, another ad adobe building. So she designed seven prefabricated houses, and she knew that um, there were no nails in California, so they were all mortise and tenon, tenon framing. She brought those seven houses. She was going to be a real estate entrepreneur. But soon after, she had how many kids here that she brought with her? I think it was eight kids. Uh, but she had a whole bunch of kids, 
and her husband died on her as soon as they got here. So she decided, well, I have all these children to support. I'm going to take these seven houses. I'm going to put them together and open a hotel. So this is supposedly the buildings that she brought were supposedly the first wooden houses in Monterey, and she was supposedly the first woman to run a hotel or boarding house. So here she is in later years, and the reason I'm showing you this photo is because it has a, a good story attached to it. Um, so when, right before she opened her hotel, she wanted to take all necessary precautions. And so um, she drilled holes in the walls of every single room so she could hear what was going on. <laughs> so this came into, this, this was a good thing because before long, these sort of dangerous looking men checked in. And so she listened in and evidently they had just stolen $15,000 in gold from the custom house and they buried it on the second, under the second stair of her house right there. And so they were gonna keep it there until they were gonna leave in the uh, darkness. So she heard all this and uh, reported it to the authorities. And they came and they recovered the gold. However, no arrests were made. Anybody know why? The sheriff was bribed. Those men bribed the sheriff and they hightailed it back up to San Francisco, only to be hung two years later, just saying. <laughs> yeah. And again, and not a great uh, photograph, but there's not a great a lot of good photographs of E. Charlton Fortune, who some of you might know. Um, her full name was Euphemia Charlton Fortune. She used her, the name E. Charlton Fortune because she was an artist and the art world was very competitive and if you were a woman, you weren't gonna make it. However, she is considered one of America's great impressionist painters. She was uh, born in Sausalito and traveled the world to study art in Europe, New York, and San Francisco. In 1910, she started spending her summers with her mother in Monterey, which eventually became her permanent home. She was elected as a member of the prestigious National Academy of Design. And this is an example of one of her paintings of Monterey Bay. You can see Lake Elastero there, too. This is Anne Henrietta Martin with her dog, Senator. She was the first woman candidate for Senate in 1918. Um, she tried to run again in 1920, but she didn't win, but she did become a prominent woman, woman in women's suffrage. <coughs> she lived in Carmel and was also active in the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom. This is Marion Hollins. Marion Hollins was considered the greatest all-around athlete of her time. She played tennis, was a marksman, and a race car driver. But most of all, she was remembered as an expert polo player and golfer. She won numerous golf championships and became a pioneer in golf course development, which included Cyprus, Paso Tiempo in Santa Cruz, and also she built a course in Long Island, the Women's National Golf Course and Tennis Club, which was women only. Huh. This is Frances Elkins. Uh, she is known as California's first great interior decorator. She established her career in Monterey after she purchased the crumbling Casa Amesti. She transformed the adobe into a show place which attracted a lot of uh, well-heeled um, people who lived in Pebble Beach. So she started decorating the homes of Pebble Beach. Her decorating style caught on. She moved, uh, started decorating in San Francisco. So. I think I have a, my next photo is, she's known for her distinctive California style, relaxed California style. Now this might not look too relaxed to you, but <laughs> this is the interior of Casa, Casa Amesti. Here's Pearl Carey. Mm -hmm. Pearl is described as the epitome of grace, dignity, and service. 
She moved to Seaside as an Army wife in 1952. She distinguished herself in public service, including serving as president of the Peninsula chapters of the NAACP and the American Civil Liberties Union. She was a member of Monterey County's Commission on the Status of Women and helped organize the National Women's Political Caucus of Monterey County. Pearl loved public service, but she also loved golf. She served as president of the Western States Golf Association and received the USGA Joe Day Award and the Northern California Golf Association Distinguished Service Award. She worked tirelessly to promote and fund the involvement of minority youth in the sport. This is Abby Jane Hunter. She was one of the first women real estate developers and builders in Monterey County. In, 19, in, in 1892, her women's real estate investment company acquired 164 acres of the Carmel City Tract, and she renamed the area Carmel by the Sea. She sold about 300 lots to teachers, professors, and writers who are at that time known as brain workers. <laughs> She also helped build two of the first businesses in town, a bathhouse and the Carmelo Hotel, which is now the nucleus of the Pine Inn. And this is my last slide. This is Maria Antonia Field. Maria Antonia Field's mother was related to the Esteban Munras family, who founded the town of Soledad and on their San Vicente Rancho. They also owned Rancho Laguna Seca. So her hacienda can still be seen off of Highway 68. Mm -hmm. And if you see all those sort of broken down fences that are sort of red, mm -hmm. she built all those to delineate her property lines. Mm -hmm. Gives you a good feeling, you know, when you're driving down Highway 68, you can see this huge amount of land that they owned. But um, she, was tireless in her um, preservation of Spanish adobes throughout California. And she wrote many books on early California history, and her work led King Alfonso of Spain to give her the title of uh, Her Excellency. So after that, everybody was supposed to call her Lady Field. In 1964, she donated her family heirlooms to the Carmel Mission, where they can now be seen in the Munras uh, Memorial Museum, which you haven't been there. It's really an excellent museum, very fascinating. I do want to say that there's many, many, many more women here in Monterey County, um, but Juan told me to keep it short. <laughs> okay. ladies that you showed, um, you mentioned that they were the first person to, like the, the, the lady who drove the stagecoach. Stagecoach. And, um, she might have been the first and only. Yeah, and, and was she only the same person, so the first person to vote? The first woman to vote? Right. Um, in your craft as, as a historian, how do you go about authenticating who was the first person to do something? Mm -hmm. You know, some of the time you can't, and so like with Charlie Parkhurst, she is said to be the first woman to vote. So there's not necessarily, you can, especially when you go far back like that, you cannot necessarily authenticate that type of information. So in those cases, I usually say she's said to be. Well, thank you very much for coming. I really appreciate it. Uh, and like I said, uh, I look forward to more of these. I hope you do too. And we'll, I promise to bombard you with county Z emails reminding you of them. So thanks for coming. <laughs>